All righty. It is crossover time. Willard and Dibs in the house with Stein and Goo. Mm-hmm. We're getting closer to Sunday's ball game. It's going to be fun. Game of the year in the, in the entire NFL. I think that's a no-brainer, right? So far. Come on, so Dibs. Far. I mean, ah, Buffalo-Miami so last week was, uh, I mean, you could say that was the game of the week. It didn't yeah. turn out to be that way. But uh, uh, win- uh, winning percentages are higher from this week's team. Okay. Well, and, this is, and you're right. That's what it comes down to. No, but I mean Mi- Mi- right, Miami. Miami. That's it. like yeah. we were even just in the other room talking about this rivalry and how does it only does it exist more for people of our age mm. uh, because these two teams, neither one of them has won a Super Bowl in over 25 years. So what are we all I'm really yelling about, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a, well, both of them. I know the Niners have threatened a lot more. 95 to 94. Yeah, yeah. the Niners exactly. have threatened a lot more than the Cowboys. Ooh, that's all I'm and, saying. And so that's fine, and, and whatever that's worth to you, that's, that's worth to you. But um, to me, it's about the fan bases. You can have a ready-made loud rivalry in an hour, like Philly and the Niners largely have, provided that you have big, loud, brash, caring fan bases and brands. Mm. Which is why I would not put Buffalo and Miami on the same plane as Niners Dallas in a seven day period. Buffalo and Miami is kind of that's the flavor of the month, but Miami's fan base is eh. And there's some bad blood with Philly and San Francisco from what happened sure. last year. So that game to me, both being in the NFC championship game, when it arrives, is going to be there's the radio stations. Hey, I mean, there's I mean, bad blood. The Niner rivalry moves. Seattle mm. was a rival for seven years. Yep. Now they don't feel like one. that anymore. Yeah. The Rams thing doesn't get me turned up like Dallas does because the Rams don't have any fans to yell at. Hard times. They're though. just yeah. but, well. I mean, they they won a Super Bowl less than two years ago, but there's not enough people who care. Yeah. That's to me. That's what this is about. And uh, and I'll also say this. Uh, your side of this, who? Yeah, boy. They, you know what the proof is that the Niners are in Dallas's head? I don't hear a damn thing this this time. Do you remember last time with this playoff games? We got radio stations getting together for simulcasts. Like Micah hasn't. Parsons hasn't. Either. He's been quiet as a, he's been Draymond Green. There is a and com- I appreciate it. Quiet as a church. Please. Confidence problem for Dallas. We right talked now. about it this you morning think? in this matchup. It not I, not for the players, for the fan base. Oh, okay. I, yes, because I think yes, I think for the, the Cowboys, city of Dallas, it feels like the Cowboys are playing this the right way. I agree with you in terms of they're the team we got to beat. They're better right now. Just shush. you know all that go, stuff. Yeah, you know shush what I mean? until you win. So, and Jerry Rice, kind of what Jerry, even what Jerry Jones said, but it, it, it mm. may be a setup. But that's what you have to do. The Jerry Jones thing. He's just trying to put the pressure on the 49ers. Yeah. The Super Bowl goes through San Francisco. So like, that would what, be what reverse devil tongue. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think? I think he's right, though. He well, might be. You know, he might also be tweaking the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe. Maybe. But he'll get to them when they play. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm see I don't know. If he doesn't have to say anything then because they do it twice a year. You know, I think they're, I think they're used to it. Dibs, um, I'm sure you guys talked about this yesterday, but let me ask you this. If you were a cat, because the, the Peter King thing was interesting. If you're a Cowboy fan sure. and you want to win the game, you can take out Purdy or McCaffrey. Who would you take out? I take out McCaffrey. Okay, it, and it, it's not close. I mean, I, I'm I'm respectful of Brock Purdy, but Christian McCaffrey right now to me is the MVP through four games. So if I'm Dallas, what scares me most is McCaffrey because uh, the Niners are going to try to run the ball, yep. and McCaffrey is the best runner. Of the football, and you saw what Arizona did to beat Dallas. They ran it right at uh, Micah Parsons, and they kind of took him out of the game in terms of the ground game. And then if the Niners are going to run it, they're going to use McCaffrey to run it. Eli Mitchell may play. Mason, TDP haven't oh, played. So if I'm Dallas, I'd much rather have Brock Purdy and no McCaffrey than the other way around. Mm. Even if, <laughs> to that point, Dibs, the quarterback touches the ball every play. Sure. Yeah. Last time these two teams linked up, McCaffrey had 35 yards on the ground. They held him in check. But those throws, I think, by Brock Purdy, where they could be the oh-no throws, 
Thus far, he's mastered not messing up. And Steiny and I got into it about his performance, uh, Brock Purdy. He didn't turn it over. Yeah, he didn't have any touchdowns, but right, he didn't right. turn it over. If that were Sam Darnold and Dallas was stout against the run, you're going to have to light a candle every time he dropped back to pass and something could go haywire. So to me, I, and I'm being real, I wouldn't have said Brock Purdy until I heard uh, King say that. I'm thinking the quarterback would be my answer of who I would want out. I think it's I think it's a great debate that has no well. There's it, no there's no, there's no right answer. There's no yeah. There's no right answer. I'm with you, Goo. It would definitely and and I think Vegas would would for whatever that's worth. I think the Niners would still be favored in this game if Christian McCaffrey were out. I think the number would go down, but I think they'd still be favored. I think they'd be an underdog if Sam Donald was starting wow. the game. I really do, and I and I heard what you said earlier, uh, Steiny, and this is true. I feel like a lot of us have just moved on with the idea that Sam Darnold is a pretty good product as long as he's got a Niner helmet and Kyle calling plays, and that's a figment of our imagination. Right. We might be right, but they, there's absolutely zero evidence of that whatsoever. The only thing we know is that's Sam Darnold. <laughs> And we've watched him play football before, and it doesn't look like this. It doesn't look anything like this at all. Are there reasons? Sure, we can predict. There's no way to know, but I would have way more confidence in, in this 49er team as long as Brock Purdy is quarterbacking it to still function at a somewhat high level. Yes, a lesser level, but somewhat high. Yeah, I, I have no idea what Sam's would do. I'm, I'm and kinda, I hope we never find out. I'm kind of with you. I feel like what Sam Darnold, we don't know, but I'll bet you he's going to be better than he was, but still not as good as Purdy is. Mm. And will that be good enough if they need Darnold to win some games during the course of a season? Probably, but I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one, you know? Oh, you mean Darnold? Yeah, no. I mean, this one, yeah. you know, this is, and this is, it's going to be fun uh, to watch be Purdy. Fantastic. And, you know, the other thing I was saying is, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it matters. But if, like, Purdy's track record is Purdy's track record. And he's going to lose a game at some point, And it might be Sunday. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no, so, uh, oh, no, that's what I was, was going to say. <laughs> he's going to um, lose a game at some point. Right. But what, what I'm saying is there'll be two things that I think are true. One is he's still pretty good. He's still 10-1. and one, But I do think it'll be fair to say, huh, of his, all his games, the Cowboys have given him trouble. More trouble than any other team. Yeah, which I, I mean, that would make a little sense, right? I mean, they're 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 very they're good. They're very good. I he know can't you... beat a good team, is what you're trying to say. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm really not. I'm really not. I mean, Philadelphia knocked him out, and you can excuse that <sighs> as know. oh, Brock doesn't get the loss because he didn't finish the game. No, he gets the L because they knocked him out. Right. They knocked you out yeah. of the game. You already beat yeah. Dallas. Well, How can you say he can't beat about a Philly. good team? Yeah, talking about Philly. But you said he can't beat a good team. Well, well Dak beat Dallas okay. in that game. Well, so if we're going to qualify no, all of his terrible. wins. No, I'm with Dibs here. Sure. You and are? he doesn't get, well, the, listen, he doesn't he get the Miami he win he didn't, because he, didn't, he came off the bench. <laughs> I got it. Okay. And, and, yes. and, the, and the two Seattle wins, he doesn't get those. One of them. all right. Playoff team. Broken <laughs> rib Thursday night on the road. Yeah, Giants, Fo Pittsburgh, I, and Arizona. Those I mean, are three okay. high quality wins. All right, all right. We're follow, gonna, follow we're gonna do here. this at twelve wins. Follow, we're gonna be. I he mean, hasn't beat a good team. Follow me NFL. here. Follow me here. Okay. I'm not saying it's all right. You know, but I mean, I'm just telling you, it's coming. If of course throws, it is. If he throws two, not by me. Oh, you mean this weekend? We if were he, talking about the hypothetical if they lose, if Mark. Brock, that's where this came from. Let's say all I said is whatever. How many? however many games Brock's played so far, he was the least effective. I'm not going to say bad. He's, he was least effective in the Dallas playoff game last year. They're good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying, he goes out tomorrow or Sunday, they lose 20-16, to 16 and he throws two picks. Ooh. I'm just going to guarantee you people are going to say, huh, looks like he might have a Dallas issue, and we know he can't beat Philly. I know it's going to be unfair. I think, your, I think your first sentence is a little bit more accurate. I don't, okay. I don't know what we know about anything outside I, of Dallas. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. That people will of be like, Of course they're going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Of okay. course they're going to say it. And then Kyle Shanahan's going to have a press conference, and he'll say it's ridiculous, which is why I texted you guys about Priest's yeah. call. Yeah. And I'm sorry that that turned into uh, World War Eight, But, I, oh, no. like, I, like Priest, 
Priest, it's not that it was a bad call, and I know a lot of listeners maybe don't know what we're, what what, he, what I'm referring to, but Priest earlier essentially said, he said, uh, look, Brock is doing exactly what the Niners are asking him to do and therefore should be complimented for it, but then the call spilled into... 90%. 90% of other offenses, he would fail. And then he used the word vertical. So and just so say two what things, you're trying to say. Two things hit my brain. One, the vertical passing game doesn't exist anymore in the NFL. This has been written about. There's data all over the place. This idea that if you've got a good arm like Patrick Mahomes, you huck it downfield on every... Al Davis is dead. Okay? so And so is that offense. It's too soon. No one's doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah, so buddy. this idea that that's not, the, the rest right. of the league is 90% of the people aren't doing what the Niners are doing. No, it's more the other way around. 90% are trying to do what the Niners and Dolphins are doing. That's number one. But number two, there's no escaping that what he said is exactly what Kyle Shanahan was dismissing and calling ridiculous. But it's the nature of the beast, and it starts with TV. That's fine. And I, and I told, that's, that's how fine. it is. But the right. bottom line is you cannot divorce yourself from those comments saying that you're a product of the 49ers system, and the head coach of the team called that ridiculous yeah. less than 24 hours ago. So... Doesn't mean you can't think it, yeah. but that's what that was. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. My only point was that a great coach asks his quarterback to play to his strengths and not his weaknesses. And if, if Lamar Jackson... You wouldn't ask Lamar Jackson to do what Brock Purdy's doing. You would never ask Brock Purdy to play like Lamar Jackson. Right. So, in that sense, yes. Like you, in that sense, yeah. He's the. It's it's not shade to Brock Purdy to say, yeah. I mean, Kyle's got him playing exactly to all the strengths and weaknesses. So we're not. You know, we're criticizing that he can't run a four. Flat forty? No, no, we're not. I, no, it's not a no, criticism. He's criticizing him? No, but but it's so I guess kind of a moot point because you're right. It's true about every quarterback in the league. Like every single one of them has a coach that's trying to to highlight their strengths. Let me All of them. Let me throw this at you. But the idea that he couldn't run ninety percent of the other teams—that's silly. Well, the the question I have, and it is a hypothetical, and maybe it doesn't matter, but I do think it's interesting. If like if imagining other quarterbacks on the Niners. How similar would it look to now? How different would it look? And I know, we'll never find out. But to me, talking about it is talking about Kyle Shanahan and maybe his greatness. If he had Lamar Jackson, maybe it would look totally different. And they'd be 14-3 and three because he devised something around Lamar Jackson's skills. Well, Lamar has never had... Offensive. And a passer. Well, right. He's also never had offensive teammates like this group has. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I don't know how you guys would answer it. My thought is they would probably look a lot more like they look now. Like the Niners, if they had Mahomes, would look a lot like the Chiefs. And if they if they had Josh Allen, they'd look a lot like the Bills. Because uh. those two teams have smart coaches, too, that are highlighting their quarterbacks' top skills. Yeah. You know? But, right, that's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, hey, we got a meeting. Did you know that? I so actually meeting. did know that. And yeah. he needs to get out of here because he has his backpack on. So no, you guys can go. It's I'm gonna okay. I'm going to turn it over. It's okay. To Willard, it is. So you can go. Oh, you know what? Yeah, on 95.7. <laughs> Hi, game. There you go. Bye. Bye.